When we try to understand our universe, it's really important that we think big. Because we humans have again and again and again underestimated not only the size of our cosmos, but also our ability to understand it. We've repeatedly realized that everything that we thought existed was just a small part of a much grander structure. Our planet, our solar system, our galaxy, which in turn is just a small part of a cluster of galaxies, and these galaxies form enormous filamentary patterns that span billions of, of, of light years, ultimately, in an even larger structure, this, which is what we affectionately call our universe. But when I was a kid, I used to think our universe meant everything that exists. But in astronomy, we use the word universe to refer only to this, this spherical region of space from which light has had time to reach us so far during the 13.8 billion years since our Big Bang. It's quite possible that space continues even beyond this, but then we would have to wait billions of years for light to reach us from more distant objects. There might even be parallel universes of various kinds. Before talking more about our universe, we have to understand what these strange yellow and green and, and blue patterns are. And to understand that, we have to talk not just about our place in space, but about our place in time. When we look out into the sky, fortunately, we can see not just what our universe looks like now, but what it looked like in the past. We, we see the sun the way it looked eight minutes ago, because that's how long it took for, for light to reach us. When we look at stars in the night sky, we typically see them hundreds of years in the past. So somebody who is looking at us from over there wouldn't see us, but they might see Tsar Peter the Great, for example. And uh, with really good telescopes now, we can see many galaxies the way they were billions and billions and billions of years ago. So what have we learned when observing the history of the cosmos like this with our telescopes? Well, we've learned something very, very surprising. And to really appreciate how surprising it is, I like to imagine that I'm, I'm giving a lecture and that each of the people in the classroom is a galaxy. And then I noticed something really strange. I noticed that everybody in this front row is super old, like, like 90 years old or so with canes and wheelchairs. And then in the next row, people are 80 years old. The next row, they're 70 years old. And then gradually you get back to a row with just a bunch of teenagers. And then beyond them, you have a bunch of kindergartners, then toddlers, and then you have in the second last row just a bunch of infants. The last row of the classroom is completely empty. And as if that weren't weird enough, the far wall of the classroom is glowing with a strange glow of microwaves. And to make it even more confusing, everybody, all the people in this classroom, are blushing, kind of red in the face. The nearby ones are a little bit pink, and the ones in the far back are like tomato red in the face. This is exactly what we actually see when we look with telescopes at the galaxies that are out there. What on earth does this mean? Well, first of all, the, why did everybody in my classroom seem like they had sorted it themselves by age? That's because, as we discussed, the farther away we look, Right, the longer it has taken the light from there to reach us. So we're seeing events that happen pro progressively farther and farther into the past. That means that nearby in space, we see old galaxies that have had 13.8 billion years of, of universe history. They mature and get big and f finished f forming. Whereas when we look farther away, we're looking so far into the past that we can only see young galaxies the, the way it, that hadn't yet had time to fully develop. And very far away, all we see is baby galaxies, small, messed up little things that haven't really had a chance to, to grow and mature. I mentioned that the last row in the classroom was completely empty. That's because if you look really far away in space, you don't see any galaxies at all. We're looking at things that happened so long ago that the galaxies hadn't had time to form yet. All that existed back then was the gas, uh, mainly hydrogen, out of which the galaxies later on were formed. Now, why was it that everybody in this classroom, of, I was imagining, was blushing? 
Well, if you go to the highway and you listen to cars drive by, you hear them go, ew, ew. They do not sound, ew, ew. <laughs> this is the Doppler effect, that when a car goes away from you, the sound gets shifted to a lower frequency. Ew. And it's exactly the same way with light. When a galaxy is flying away from you, the light gets shifted to a lower frequency, which makes it look more red in color. We call this red shift in astronomy. So the fact that all the galaxies look redder than, the, than you would expect them to means that they're all flying away from us. And that's what we mean when we say that our universe is expanding. And the fact that when you look carefully, you see that distant galaxies fly away faster, a galaxy twice as far away flies away roughly twice as fast, means that all the galaxies were here in the same place, roughly at the same time. You can figure out how long ago that time was by just taking the distance divided by the speed, and you get about 13.8 billion years when you do this calculation carefully and take into account the accelerations and the decelerations. So 13.8 billion years ago, something really strange happened. All of the stuff in our universe was very, very squished together and very, very hot and dense. And that can help us understand the final mystery I mentioned, the strange glow from the back of the room. If everything is expanding and flying apart, so is this gas, the hydrogen gas which later form the galaxies. And if we all know that if you expand the gas, it cools off. That's how our air conditioners and refrigerators work. So if we go farther into the past, when, we, when everything was more squished together, this gas was progressively hotter and hotter and hotter. And when a gas gets sufficiently hot, it turns into a plasma. And the plasma is opaque, not transparent. So it looks to us like beyond all the galaxies, there is this plasma screen of glowing gas, and it looks the same in every direction that we look. We can take pictures of this plasma screen, and we have taken pictures of it, and this is what it looks like. What we see here, these beautiful images taken by NASA's Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe Satellite show photographs of this hydrogen plasma that surrounds us on all directions, in all directions. And this is so far away that it's taken 13.8 billion years for this light to reach us. So these are the baby pictures of our universe, in a sense, showing what it looked like just 400,000 years after our Big Bang. If you were to go back to that plasma, it would be about as hot as the surface of the sun, and so we would immediately die. And it was about 3,000 degrees. But space expanded and all this, this, this radiation from the plasma cooled off from 3,000 degrees to only about three degrees above absolute zero. Very, very cold heat radiation. And uh, it's so cold that it corresponds to microwaves, electromagnetic waves that are about this long. The same kind of microwaves we have in the microwave oven that we use to warm up our food. So this is a photograph taken with these incredibly sensitive microwave cameras from space. And just last, and very, very recently, the Planck satellite produced even more accurate and, and high fidelity uh, images of this with 50 megapixel resolution with uh, important contributions also from Russian scientists, confirming that all these images were correct and giving us even more precision. So we now have actually quite solid understanding of what happened during the past 13.8 billion years. We humans have always had a good idea of what happened very recently and no clue what happened really long ago and somewhere in between has been a frontier of our knowledge and as I've described here we've gradually managed to push now with science the frontier of our knowledge backward in time until about 400,000 years after our Big Bang. But we can push it even farther we can't see what happened earlier than that because light couldn't get through because this plasma was not transparent. However, there's a kind of fossil evidence we've discovered from what happened earlier. When you go back even farther in time, as the Ukrainian-Russian physicist uh, Alexander Friedman first uh, worked out, this 
plasma was just hotter and hotter and hotter. And when our universe was about one second old, the plasma was as hot as the center of our sun. So the plasma there did, the hydrogen there did exactly the same thing as it does now in the center of our sun, namely nuclear fusion, turning the hydrogen into helium. Except that this cosmic fusion reactor cooled off and switched off pretty abruptly. And you can calculate now very accurately with, with computers how many percent of the hydrogen turn into helium. How, and you calculate that we, you make about 25% helium. We look with our best telescopes out into space and measure how many percent of our universe is helium, 25%. It's very impressive. You can also predict how much other stuff this fusion reactor makes. A little bit of lithium, a little bit of, of uh, helium, the helium-3 isotope, a little bit of deuterium. It agrees really, really well with what we see. So in summary, even though we humans still don't know what really, really happened very early on, why there was a Big Bang and things like this, we have a very good understanding of what happened after the first second and what, can, what happened between then and during the subsequent 13.8 billion years. Basically, we had this cosmic fusion reactor, produced a bunch of helium, our universe kept expanding, kept cooling off. After 400,000 years, it was cold enough that the plasma turned into gas. After that, things started getting gradually more interesting. And this boring gas with almost no structure gradually clumped because of gravity and formed these fantastic structures, galaxies, stars, planets, and eventually us, us humans. So this is um, what we've been able to figure out so far about the history of our universe. Usually in science, when we answer some questions, it leads to new questions. And that's happened in cosmology as well. We've answered the question of how old is our universe. It's about 13.8 billion years. We've answered the question of what happened during most of this period of 13.8 billion years. But it's posed new, very important questions. What really happened before that? What, if anything, caused our Big Bang? Was that really the beginning of time in some sense or, or not? Uh, what's going to happen in the distant future? Is our universe going to keep expanding forever? Or is it going to come crashing back on itself again in a big crunch of sorts? Or is something else bad going to happen? And what is our universe really made of? We were quite shocked to discover that the atoms that make up everything on this planet that we understand, they constitute only 5% of the stuff in our universe. And the other 95%, well, big mysteries, what they are, but it seems to be at least two different kinds of stuff that we call dark matter and dark energy. And it's extremely important to try to understand more what, what they are, in particular because this dark energy is going to determine the whole future of the cosmos, as it, as it, as it turns out. We also have a, a very interesting theory pioneered by Alan Guth and Andre Linde and others called inflation, that which is the most popular explanation for what sort of caused our Big Bang. And we would love to test that better. And there are some experiments trying to do this. So we're in a very exciting situation where on one hand, it's, it's, we humans had totally underestimated the size of the cosmos. On the other hand, we had also totally underestimated our ability with our human minds to understand the cosmos. And we understand so much more now. At the same time, it's important that we don't get too arrogant because there are these huge open questions, these mysteries that we don't understand the answers to. And uh, I think that makes this as exciting a time as ever for the field of cosmology. <laughs>